In this section of the course, we're going to create graphical user interface which would permit the user to do some custom drawing using mouse and keyboard events. For example, they could uh, draw segments or squares or triangles or some other uh, simple primitive shapes um, and be able to store that information in computer memory. In order to be able to store that uh, information, we are going to use a standard library vector container. And the standard library vector container is a template class. So to begin with, we're going to open this presentation and go over uh, some aspects of template programming in C++. So let's begin with this uh, captivating uh, question. How could we get the compiler to write code for us? That uh, sounds enchanting. So let's, uh, let's start with an example. I created this uh, new empty project for uh, our demonstrations. And uh, I added a single source file uh, to this project. As you can see, it's just an empty main function. And I include iostream so we can interact with the user. Okay, so let's start with an example of a class. And let's just close the Solution Explorer because this main function is about all we need uh, in this presentation. Okay, so we'll just try to think about a container. Okay, so let's uh, think about a container. Of course, container is a class. And this container will have a specific size, such as this, uh, let's say container size like this, and we can then initialize it to say 10 elements. Then we could uh, think about an integer uh, type of uh, element to be stored in the container, and we can uh, specify some sort of storage and it will be an array of integers. We say, okay, let's use this container size. And uh, that's pretty much about it, what, what, uh, what we're going to do in terms of our data members in this class. Then let's say public and uh, add, uh, add a function name set. It's a void function, does not return anything back. Uh, set, um, we can specify position. Of course, I use size t for the type of position because it's an unsigned integer. So it can be only a positive number or zero. And then uh, integer uh, item, right? So, so we have like container and an item. Okay. So this uh, function modifies the, the container uh, value. So this is not a constant function. And the second function will return an integer. And uh, it will say get. Uh, and uh, it will use this position parameter to specify where to retrieve the stored element. Okay, so this is good enough for our demonstration. So this is our class like this. And uh, we can copy and paste these two functions. And we can think about a very simple uh, sort of like one line uh, uh, implementation of these functions. Uh, today I'm not uh, creating um, a header file. Uh, and the implementation file. I'm just trying to keep everything in one file. When you download a source code uh, for uh, this uh, series of uh, demonstrations, you will find multiple versions of the main, uh, main uh, source file as uh, it will correspond to the presentation's um, uh, slide numbers. Okay, 
So we have a set, and of course this set belongs to our container. And this get also belongs to our container. So we're going to say set, and what we can do is just basically say storage. And uh, use uh, subscript for specific position and uh, store our integer inside the container. Likewise, here in the get um, of the element, uh, we just say return storage at the required position. Okay, so how can we test this? What we can do is to say container and the container uh, declare container then we will probably have to use a set function such as this uh, set to call this function set um, say at position 5 uh, we can store value uh, 50 okay so something like this and then we can print the result standard uh, character output print container uh, get the same element so it will prove that our storage is in place that when we create container we allocate this um, array of integers specific size is also given as a constant value this is a static constant integer integral types can be initialized in line within the body of the class declaration so everything looks pretty good uh, except uh, of course get should probably be a const function so let's just change that and look i forgot the semicolon right here that would be giving me some errors if i try to compile so anyway we uh, we make this get function const it doesn't change anything inside the class let's try build this okay so this builds okay and uh, if we run it uh, trivially it prints 50 right so it prints uh, as a result of the statement we go to this uh, get uh, we previously stored at position 5 50 uh, which is this numeric value and now we print it and uh, in itself this container uh, could be of some use i guess it kind of uh, masks the raw um, storage of a C style array and it looks a little bit more intelligent than a very primitive facility such as array so perhaps uh, it has some potential um, when we think about uh, containers that could contain some values and uh, in the presentation I'm talking about stack container but I'm thinking that this uh, very primitive container set and get could be uh, best uh, best approach to demonstrate various techniques so of course this container um, it, it, what kind of hard coding we have in this application well we have hard coded container size well if we really want to we could increase the size hmm? that's that's not so bad because we have just one single place where if needed we can update the size and uh, if we need larger or smaller size we could make a change it seems reasonably ma maintainable but what's most uh, difficult in terms of hard coding so far is actually this integer data type. Look, uh, we make the storage of type integer. Uh, we uh, make our items of type integer. And of course, when we retrieve, uh, we also return an integer. Everything is hardwired to be an integer in the, in the uh, this um potentially you know very very first solution uh, to our problem but what if we want to replace integer with a double right so this is almost like uh asking this question the second time how could we get the compiler without our intervention 
generate containers for integers, doubles, and potentially all sorts of other data types. This is now becoming uh, something of a, of an in, a very interesting um, perspective. And uh, templates allow us to do exactly this. We can parameterize our code, meaning that instead of using int, we can make a gap instead of it. And this gap is like a temp, like, you know, the code with gaps becomes a template that we can fill with integers and doubles. And rather than that, you know, it doesn't matter whether it's the storage is uh, for doubles or integers, it should be able to accept items of um, the templated type, uh, basically the, the type, some kind of generic data type, which could be integer, double, string, uh, character, uh, potentially many, many other types of values that we could consider uh, to storing in our array. So this is our uh, initial setup.